Hello YouTube and hello Scott Kortmeister. Um, Scott has tagged me for the um, three things tag um, in which uh, this is a little different from the other thing about uh, facts about ourselves. Um, the idea here is to tell two true things and one completely false one uh, and allow you to guess which is which. I thought it might be fun to do that. Uh, two of the things I'm going to tell you are true, and one of them is uh, made up. Uh, to begin with, in 1960, I was 17, uh, just before my 18th birthday, which was coming in October of that year, and I attended the 1960 Democratic National Convention in Los Angeles. I didn't attend the whole convention or anything like that. Actually, I was going to the University of Southern California. During, it was during the summer, and it was between my junior and senior years in high school. I was slated to be the editor of my high school paper, and um, I was taking a journalism class there for high school students. It was a workshop, actually, um, with a, uh, professional, um, a professional journalist named Don Desfor, who was the teacher. And uh, we went across the street. Uh, some of us in the, in the group managed to get um, badges from the Daily Trojan that said press. And uh, we went across the street. Jefferson Boulevard is right along the campus of USC. And on the other side of Jefferson Boulevard is the, uh, is the Memorial Coliseum, which is where the, uh, where the uh, convention was taking place. So several of us went over there, and we walked right in. No problem. They didn't give us any hassle at all. The only problem that we had was getting anywhere close enough to actually see Jack Kennedy's face clearly. They had us clear on the opposite end of the arena, from, of the, of the, of the uh, Coliseum from him, uh, more than 100 yards away, and his, he looked, his head was a little tiny thing like that with facial features, you know, completely washed out at that distance. And none of us had a binoculars. But we did get to hear Jack Kennedy speak. And um, I wish I'd been a little more alert at the time. Um, and I wish I hadn't thought that I was a Republican at the time. Because I felt almost as if I was in a, in a foreign camp or something, you know, uh, when I was there. But I did get to hear Jack Kennedy um in 1960 in person. Uh, number two, I once flew from Los Angeles to, or, or rather from New York to Los Angeles and arrived before the pilot did. Now that sounds a little odd until you realize the configuration of a 747. I had flown to New York on the red eye on a, in a Boeing 707 this was a long time ago. This was about 1974. Um, gone back to New York to watch my brother graduate from Juilliard. My brother Jim, who was uh, seven years younger than I, um, received his master's degree in music from the Juilliard School in New York and is now a, a, an accomplished musician. Uh, but um, anyway, I went back there to see him graduate, and my mother, who had been on a trip someplace, was already in New York. And so uh, we were back there for this, for this occasion. And when I came back, um, Mom wanted me to fly back with her. So she took my ticket and bumped it up to first class on a uh, 747. First time I'd ever been aboard a plane like this. The darn thing is a floating, it was not floating, a flying hotel. It's enormous. But um, the, the front of the plane, I doing a little air thing here. This doesn't really help much, does it? Never mind. Um, the cockpit is on top of the plane and, and set back some ways from the, from the nose. Um, and in the nose is the where the first, um, first class seats are, begin. Um, I was in, the, there was only one seat in front of me and then I was in two seats in the second row. Um, and um, somewhere back behind me, and above was the cockpit. So I literally arrived in Los Angeles before the pilot. Now the third one is that uh, about 25 years ago, short, fat little me, uh, starred as uh, Harold Hill in The Music Man in a dinner theater production. Now just try to imagine this because I, my, my bodily configuration was not a whole lot different from what it is right now. 
Um, I'm five foot five. Actually, I was then. I'm about five foot four and something now. Uh, and uh, and uh, my Mary and the librarian was a head taller than I was. But this was dinner theater, non-equity after all. And um, well, I did a little Harold Hill. I can do a little Harold Hill for you. Um, uh, about uh, well, either you're closing your eyes to a situation you do not wish to acknowledge or you are unaware of the caliber of disaster indicated by the presence of a pool table in your community. Well, my friend, you got trouble. Right here, I say trouble right here in River City. Why, sure, I'm a billiard player. Certainly mighty proud to say. I'm always mighty proud to say it. I consider that the hours I spend with a cue in my hand are golden. Help me cultivate horse sense and a cool head and a keen eye. Do you ever try, trick and try to give an ironclad leave to yourself from a three-rail billiard shot? But just as I say, it takes judgment, brains, and maturity to score in a balk line game. I say that any boob can take and shove a ball in a pocket, and I call that sloth. The first big step on the road to the depths of degradation. I say first, medicinal wine from a teaspoon, then beer from a bottle. And the next thing you know, your son is playing for money in a pinchback suit and listening to some big out-of-town Jasper. Here I'm talking about horse race gambling. Not a wholesome trotting race, no, but a race where they set down right on the horse. Care to see some stuck-up jockey boy setting on Padan Patch? Make your blood boil? Well, I should say. Now, friends, let me tell you what I mean. You got one, two, three, four, five, six pockets in the table. Pockets that mark the difference between a gentleman and a bum with a capital B and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. I could do the whole thing, but uh, <laughs> I, it's, it doesn't sound as good now as it did 25 years ago. Anyway, um, those, all three of those stories um, apply to me, and uh, two of them are true. Which one do you think is wrong? Um, and I would like to tag some people. Let me see. I can't pause this thing. Okay, let's just, uh, let's just uh, go off the top of my head. Uh, click before. Not sure if he's already been tagged with one of these. Um, Agnostic Man 77. And he may have been too. Again, I don't know who's been tagged. I think he already did one. But I'm going to do it again just in case. Uh, and let's see. You know, I'm going to think about this, and I'll put it, when I when I put this up, I'll put it in the box. Or it's, it's actually, it's over here. Isn't it? Yes, it's over there. I always forget which side the thing is on. Anyway, this is um, this has gone on too long. I'm going to stop right now. And um, I hope that some other people will do these things, because it seems kind of fun. Thanks for watching.